Mr. Francisco, uh, just before the break, Clive made the point that you're trusting the medium rather than the person. Uh, when it comes to the United States, I don't trust the person or the medium. Uh, I'd be happy if I never uh, uh, bought another American thing or saw another American dollar uh, because I don't like bullies. Isn't this partly the end of the era of the bully? I think multipolarity is here. I think that's the key, and the dollar is dying. There is no question about it. Let me give you some figures that are quite important. The GDP of the United States is 24 trillion. The debt, the public debt is 30 trillion. The difference between the total uh, gross domestic product and the debt is 6 trillion. 6 trillion is equivalent to the combined GDPs of the whole of the Latin American countries together, including Brazil. That gives you an idea of the problem. That's number one. There is a US debt clock, which you can find in the internet. I ran it before coming to the show. And I ran it for five minutes. And in that, those five minutes, the amount of debt that increased in the United States was 8 billion. <laughs> now, 8 billion is, if you have three of them, that is the GDP of Nicaragua. If you have five of them, that's the GDP of Bolivia. The United States has a very serious problem with infrastructure. Their productivity is low. The number of um, bridges in the United States that require urgent repair, no repair, urgent repair, is 65,000. The, the quality of the road, according to the um, American Society of Civil Engineers, they produce a report every year, 42% of the roads are mediocre or in need of repair the electricity plants, um, airports, and so on. Everything is a complete mess. The United States doesn't have high-speed trains. It doesn't. Sorry to say like this, even Spain has them. So that gives you an idea of the problem. And the United States economy is growing at a rate of something between 2 and 1%. The Chinese economy, with all the problems, is growing at a rate of 7%. So that means in the next 10 years, arithmetically, the, the US economy is going to be 20% bigger and the Chinese economy is going to be 70% bigger. Now, if you take what countries have done regarding this question of the dollar, possibly people do not know, but China and Japan are conducting their foreign trade in their currencies. Um, Iran is conducting their business in no dollar. Russia and China, Iraq, and many other countries. But the recent decision by the um, Saudi Arabia to actually conduct the selling of their oil to China in Yuan. Now, China buys 25% of the total output of Saudi Arabia. This is 30 billion. The United States purchases only 7%. So if you keep going down, you can see that there is already a multipolarity of, in of initiatives what we don't have is the international architecture, financially speaking, so that there is a system which is coherent, is international, it works, it has uh, legal security that gives you legal confidence that if you enter into a transaction in that system, you know, whatever it is, you, it's going to be respected. That has to happen, but it's beginning to take place already. So the United States is, is in a real, real trouble, and it doesn't have any possibility. I just looked at the budget, that Joe Biden presented to Congress for 2023. It's a very long document. It has three, three key components. Number one, domestic security. It's going to give to the police, it domestically, huge amount of resources. The organization Black Lives Matter said, this is not what we want. You know what happened when they have resources. And basically, Biden is trying to get votes from the right by doing this. That's number one. Number two is international security. He increased the budget, the military budget, to 773 billion, which is 30 billion more than in the previous administration. And surprisingly, he's going to apply a tax of 20% on the fortunes of 100 million upwards, which is going to produce 360 billion, and it's going to reduce the budget deficit and the deficit of the United States by one trillion in 10 years. So it's, going, it's totally useless. And in order for this budget to be passed, he needs to win it in the House, in Congress. He, he's got a majority. Control over which he may well lose in November. 
to settle it. But at the moment, if we were to, produce, to propose it, he will pass it in the House, but he will not be able to pass it through Congress because there is 50-50. And Democrat right-wing Joe Manchin already said he's not going to support it. So it's already not only is useless as a proposal to recover the economy, but it's already dead before it begins. So that gives you an idea of the problems that they have. So the issue strategically from their point of view is this. Do they continue waging war against everybody else? And who else is there to wage war? Their calculation, it seems to me, was if we are able to bully Russia and make them accept our way, and then later on we'll continue with that until you know we produce something equivalent to regime change, isolating China thereby, and therefore the next move is to attack China. And this one hasn't worked. The, other, the next one is certainly not going to work. So the United States is desperate because he's facing a very serious challenge. Number one, energy and resources from Russia to Europe, which really needs them and the Belt and Road Initiative by China, which is, at the moment, is in the region of $5 trillion. So therefore, facing with this huge, very attractive embrace from these two nations, have huge resources, one natural resource, the other one, technology, markets, money, and credit, and investment, infrastructure, is very difficult to say no. So the only possibility for them is war, war, war.